Hi everybody, this is God Sad. Third clip of the day. I was just trying to exercise, watch a bit of TV, maybe do a bit of reading and chill out. But you know how it is. You guys always pull me back in. Uh, I was tagged in a on an exchange between Pierce Morgan. Uh, I appeared on the show last week. And Basim Youssef, who is a Egyptian uh, TV host and uh, supposed satirist. And so I was very keen to to watch this because I thought, okay, well, let's let's see what the exchange is going to be. I'll put the link to the exchange between the two of them. Uh, and you can go then, uh, you know, v- listen to the words that I'm going to share now, which I just posted as a long Twitter thread. Uh, and you can contrast what I said with the context of what uh, Mr. Youssef was uh, spouting on the show. So let me just read it out and then I can add some additional comments. I just watched the exchange between Basim Youssef and Pierce Morgan. First, I thought that Pierce was incredibly gracious and generous in granting Mr. Youssef the opportunity to lecture for nearly 30 minutes. By the way, every single uh, affectation, gesticulation, uh, uh, rhetorical device that uh, Basim was using is like grade two stuff for me. I come from that region. I know satire. So I, I follow everything that he's doing. It's not nearly as impressive as you think that it is if you come from that region. Second, as a satirist from the Middle East myself, I could have easily handled Bassem's passive aggressive sarcasm. His point about the about disproportionality is nonsensical in a myriad of ways. I've already covered this in a recent sad truth clip on my show. A lot of people are hailing Mr. Yusuf for his brilliant sarcasm. It was seething, albeit castrated passive aggressiveness that has several names in Arabic. Let me share a few of those. Letmeni, Wahani, Nesnesi. If Mr. Yusuf listens to this, uh, he'll know exactly. Those are the specific, exact words that capture what he was doing. Letmeni, nesnesi, wahani. There are a few others I could include here. It's it's a particular type of poisonous irony, uh, seething sarcasm, manipulative ploys that, uh, again, if you're... Uh, well-versed in that language, it's nothing. It is impossible to have a meaningful dialogue when someone is monopolistically spewing endless transparent jabs under the guise of sarcasm. There was nothing, absolutely nothing brilliant in the sarcasm that Mr. Yusuf was using. Most decent and moral people, including yours truly, abhor the harming of any civilian on any side of a conflict. I wonder, though, if Mr. Youssef mourns the loss of all of the innocent people that have been killed by the noble people of perpetual peace. Perhaps Mr. Youssef could let us know what happened to the Egyptian Jews, the Lebanese Jews, the Syrian Jews, the Libyan Jews, the Algerian Jews, the Yemeni Jews, and the Arabian Jews from the days of Muhammad among other Mizrahi Jews. Perhaps he could tell us about whether he'd rather live in a society organized along Western principles or those dictated by the noble faith. There is enough tragedy to go around on all sides of this conflict. The reason why I'm saying this is because if you listen to Mr. Yusuf, I mean, it's just, you know, the Israelis are disproportionate. They're butchering all Palestinians. And the Palestinians are just, you know, they're, they're Minnie Ripperton, the famous soul singer. She, they just walk around with flowers and a reggaeton holding hands. And that's it. There's no nuance. There is no uh, ability to, un- there's no theory of mind of the other side and so on. So anyways, let's go on. So, as I said, there is enough tragedy to go around on all sides of this conflict. But this is a battle between two visions of how society should be organized. Again, countless Palestinians have suffered as have countless Israelis. This is not a contest of victimology poker. But free thinkers of all faiths and no faith should rise above tribal allegiance. I have more in common with the Imam of Peace, Imam Tawhidi, than I do with many Orthodox Jews because I share many values with the Imam. 
when your calculus is restricted to quote my side is the perpetual victim and the other side is the eternal satan quote, close quote as mr yusuf was doing with his very clever sarcasm you can't get anywhere both israelis and palestinians commit this cognitive and emo emotional bias rise above this do you want to spread values that are in line with individual dignity freedom of conscience freedom of speech secularism and enlightenment if yes then choose your side carefully best of luck to mr yusuf with his poisonous sarcasm kudos to peers for being classy this was a great opportunity in in my view for uh, mr yusuf who who hails from the middle east to come on he's got a huge audience i, I went to check who he is and so on and you know he, he certainly seems to have a, a large following to come on uh share a perspective of course you know he's got family in gaza so i could understand how it could be painful for him see look i'm using theory of mine i could put myself in the shoe of the other even though i have family in israel i understand his pain i understand his plight I understand that the innocent person in Gaza who's hearing the whistle signature of a bomb coming is not deserving of that. But that's what it takes. It takes a universal moral compass that says, wait a minute, forget about this specific battle, as horrifying as it is. What's the bigger issue here? It's a it's a civilizational issue. It's a it's a it's a battle between different visions of how societies should be organized. Do the Palestinians have the right vision? If so, we should all be uh, thinking about organizing our societies in the manner that they do. If not, then we should be perhaps being a bit more careful in where we uh, lay our support. When you say something like queers for Palestine, or as I did a clip recently, because I love that analogy, like saying chickens for for KFC, you're not quite understanding the full picture. Because if you are a so-called member of the queer community, then maybe it's probably not a good idea to place your support with a society that would probably not be very nice to you. And typically, they like to use you as a participant in an experiment on gravity where they look for a building and then see if gravity applies to you. So again, Mr. Yusuf, who I think might have a home in the United States, uh, has, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I think he does maybe have a home in LA. If I'm, if I'm misspeaking, then my apologies, uh, has made a vote with his feet and saying, look, all other things equal, I prefer the values that are enshrined within the West because I like liberty, I like freedom of conscience, I like freedom of speech. Well, do all of the rulers of the Palestinian ter territories share in those values? Uh, if yes, then we should all be signing up to support their cause. If no, then supporting israel is not just about supporting the zionist genocidal apartheid state it's about supporting a democracy in israel supreme court judges are arab israelis valedictorians in universities are arab israelis physicians in the top hospitals and nurses are arab physicians many of them People in the military, including officers in the IDF, you know, the genocidal apartheid regime of Israel, they're Arab, Muslim Israelis. How many Arab countries have Jews who serve in their parliament, who are valedictorians in their universities, who are the top physicians in their hospitals, who can speak freely about issues without worrying about anything oh wait a minute no there are no jews in any of those arab lands we don't know what happened to them it's a mystery it's probably they disappeared because you know zionist occupation so again one has to have a grand sense of what's at play here it's a battle between 
completely, radically visions of varied societies. Most Palestinians are undoubtedly lovely people. I know many of those Palestinians. I'm friends with many of those Palestinians. Many of those Palestinians are, f are fans of mine. So I don't have to be lectured about the fact that there are good people and bad people on any side of the conflict, right? They are asshole Jews. They are lovely Jews. They are nasty, brutal Palestinians. They are lovely, kind, and hospitable Palestinians. That's not the issue. The issue is it's a fight for different visions of how they could be optimal flourishing for individuals. Does Israel better capture that? Or do the Palestinian territories better capture that? That's the side that I choose. I don't choose to be on the side of Israel because, you know, I'm Jewish or because, you know, I have family there. Of course, I care about the safety of my family. But again, I support all of the values of classical liberalism. And that's not to be found in a territory ruled by Hamas. Take care, everybody.